Hello, welcome to Sound and Fury Book Reviews. As usual, I am Tina. Today I'm doing a book review of Metal from Heaven by August Clark. This is a book coming out October 22nd, 2024 from Erewhon Books. It's a fantasy novel. I received this arc from NetGalley in exchange for a fair review. A brassy and bold undertaking in more way than one, Metal from Heaven is a great book if you're looking for something different and very overt about its intentions. What is it about? Icarite is progress. More durable and malleable than steel, Icarite is the lifeblood of a dawning industrial revolution. Yan I. Chauncey owns the sole means of manufacturing this valuable metal, but his workers who risk their health and daily safety daily are on strike. They demand Chauncey research the hallucinatory illness befalling them, a condition they call being luster-touched. Marnie Honeycutt, a luster-touched child worker, stands proud at the picket line with her best friend and family. That's when Chauncey sends in the guns. Only Marnie survives the massacre. She vows bloody vengeance. A decade later, Marnie is the nation's most notorious highwayman, and Chauncey's daughter seeks an opportune marriage. Marnie's rage and ghosts of her past will drive her to masquerade as an aristocrat, outmaneuver political suitors, and win the heart of his daughter, so Marnie can finally corner Chauncey and satisfy her need for revenge. But war ferments in the north, and deeper grudges are surfacing. This book is not subtle. <laughs> Nothing about it could be considered downplayed or nuanced. This book is like walking around the corner wearing a fur coat and having someone throw a bucket of blood in your face. Deserved? Yes. <laughs> Unexpected? Probably not. Makes a statement? Definitely. <laughs> this book is 100% arguing that capitalism, corporate greed, and anti-unionism is bad, and communal living and stealing from the rich is good. Again, there's no subtlety or attempts to, broad, to broaden this out. It's unabashedly presenting an argument in this regard, which serves to make the themes and motivations of the characters easy to understand. Unfortunately, the style of the prose is not so simple. Now, I may say insipid things here and there and act a fool at times because life's too short to be so serious, you know, like the guys who complain on my classic sci-fi book reviews, you know, chill out guys, Andre Norton's not upset with me, she died 20 years ago. Um, but I am not stupid and I am somewhat learned. I have read many challenging novels from Ulysses to Infant Digest to Anna Karenina and I enjoy books that play with structure and are entirely straightforward. But this book didn't do enough with structure to compensate for the way it was written. Basically, this book is a whole whack load of sentence fragments. It happens far too often to be unintentional, and I found it choppy, and it entirely broke my immersion with the story. I don't know what, how I had to be this way, as there was nothing plot-wise that suggested that sentence fragments made sense for how the book should be told. Now, if it was somehow related to the main character's magical abilities, Sure, okay, but that's never made overly clear. And given everything that is overt in this book, having that be the one subtlety seems odd. <laughs> Had the sentence fragments increased when she touched Icarite or during other times where choppiness would have enhanced the reading in a mimetic way, that would have worked quite well for me. But to have just everything, every sentence, you know, a fragment all the time, I just found it a little bit exhausting <laughs> because my brain was constantly adding missing verbs, adding missing subjects. It might work well for others. As I said, it's clearly a choice and not bad writing, but this is a book review, so I gotta talk about it. And my review is that I did not like the writing style at all. <laughs> Sorry. Moving back to the good stuff, the physical descriptions in the novel are excellent. You really understand what everyone looks like, which I think is one of the harder things to actually pull off in fiction. It's easier to give everyone sort of a minimal description and let the reader fill in the blank, but the characters in this book were detailed and rich and you could picture them from the get-go. The queerness in the book was great too. There's a real lesbians banding together vibe that really welcomes you into the fold. <clears throat> That being said, the characters are a bit much at times. This could be me getting boring in my old age, but you know, all of them had very loud personalities. They kind of competed with one another in that regard. And it felt kind of like carryover from YA where at least, you know, the limited YA I've read doesn't lend itself to as many subtle characters as like adult fiction. This, like the prose, is a preference thing. I think some readers will absolutely love these characters. Me, I was like, does anyone just like chill out once in a while? Like, can we just sit down for five minutes? <laughs> I mean, maybe that's just me also being a parent. I mean, I'm pretty sure if I'd read this book when I was 20, I would be like all hyped up on the vibes. But now, you know, at almost 40, I'm just like, oh. <laughs> As a whole, I found my interest in this book would move in spurts though. I would be super, super into it for like 10%. And then I'd be kind of mad for another 10%. And then something would pick it back up and I would be super engaged again. 
this could be because there is a bit of info dumping, you know, in world building that could have been woven in a way that was less clunky or kind of maybe even trimmed back. There was also a severe lack of transition phrases, which ties to the prose as well. I think a lot of this book, though, for me is the prose. I think the story was great. I I was really into the story. I really liked the whole, like, seduce the guy's daughter aspect. That was cool. Uh, there's a lot of, like, really spicy scenes in this book that I was like, oh, okay, I'm, in, I'm into this. You know, like, there's a lot to love about this book. I just, for me, it was like, it was like, I don't like breaded food. <laughs> this is a bizarre thing. So like, you know, I would never eat like salmon en croute, you know, I, I don't like the breading. So for me, it's like, I'd have to like hack through this nasty breading to get to the stuff that I really want to get to. And I guess that's my, that's where I was limited with this book. <coughs> I will say though, the ending is worth persevering to if you also kind of aren't into the style as I am, because it's batshit crazy wild. And it was a lot of fun in a sense. <laughs> This book has a lot going for it, as I said, and I think a lot of people will really love it. I love the themes it was addressing, you know, the power lesbian dynamics and the world building was rich despite how it was presented sometimes. But, you know, I didn't love it overall. <laughs> if you're in the mood for something that starts right off the bat, thick in the action and is a high octane, no holds barred, these are my politics and fucking allegory, I'm telling it to you straight, queer as hell, not happy ending, you will enjoy this. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Um, thank you to the um, publisher and to Nick Alley for the e-arc. I really appreciated it.